Good morning, Morgan. How are you? Great, Murdoch. Thanks for giving us a call. What's on your mind this morning? Well, it's funny. Yeah, you should ask that because uh, you opened up your segment with it. I've been uh, thinking about and reading all about uh, what's going on over in Israel and Gaza, and I can't help but to relate it back to our country as I see a lot of politicians, particularly on the left, a lot of celebs, a lot of media giving favorable treatment to Hamas. I mean, are we just really at a point now where the ends justify the means? And literally, as long as the left's agenda uh, is at hand, it doesn't matter, you know, what methods uh, are undertaken to uh, you know, obtain those, uh, those results. And I just want you to comment on that, because I see a lot of similarities uh, in, like, what's going on with our country. For example... Uh, we saw a lot of BLM protests, a lot of violence, or as maybe CNN and some other people would cover them as mostly peaceful. But, uh, you know, storming into police stations, taking over police stations, setting them on fire, uh, attacking police officers, uh, those sorts of things. And those are all kind of brushed off or at least justified because somehow there's a noble goal here. And then I see the same thing happening uh, with support of Hamas. I mean, here's a terrorist organization, uh, which is internationally known largely funded by Iran, uh, and uh, everybody's okay with that because somehow they view the Israelis as occupying the Palestinians. Well, you know, I just wanted you to comment on it. Yeah, well, thank you for that question. Thank you for that suggestion to comment on it. You know, when you look at the way, in particular, Israel is different. Let me, let me just say, first of all, I think you've identified something very important here, and that is the concept which is a communist or... Marxist-Leninist concept of the ends justify the means. Saul Alinsky believed in that. All of these quote-unquote revolutionaries, these people that hold their fist up and want to be taken in a photo with the raised fist of the international workers' revolution, these people have a fundamental belief that the end justifies the means. And you're exactly right. And when you're dealing with people like that, you have to understand There is no morality there. There is no absolute version of right and wrong because right and wrong are simply tools. They're simply tools to achieve your larger goal, which in their minds is greater than right and wrong. And in their minds, there is no right and wrong, so they can do very wrong things. They can lie, cheat, steal, murder, uh, support terrorists, support evil all in the name of achieving some goal that they've established as being above the concepts of morality. And this is something fundamental to the way that that movement operates. It's something we have to recognize. If we look for it, we can see it everywhere. And you're exactly correct. We can see that at play here in the way that the narrative engineers in the media are dealing with what's going on in Israel and the Gaza Strip. And frankly, a lot of people... You know, a lot of people who say they identify with the Palestinians and their plight and the Israelis, they've got negative things to say about the Israelis. Uh, I don't know that they've looked into it that deeply. I don't know that they know their history of what's gone on in that conflict, what's gone on in that region of the world for 4,000 years. They don't understand that history, which we have, which is documented. We know what happened there. There's no question Israel was the original nation that was there. They have the best claim to that land, and that's where they live now. And by the way, they bought that land on which they live from the Arabs after the Balfour Declaration, and some of it before, but after the year 1918, up until the year 1948, when the state of Israel was recognized finally as its own state after the British left Palestine, withdrew their troops, and the Palestinian mandate ended that the British had in place, and Israel was recognized as a nation. But the Jews that lived there, the Zionists, they had bought that land. They bought it fair and square from the Arabs. Murdoch, you're talking about some in the Hollywood crowd jumping in to defend Hamas. And one of those celebrities, Trevor Noah of The Daily Show, said he compared it to a sibling rivalry and said, I want to ask an honest question. If you're in a fight where the other person can't beat you, how hard should you retaliate when they try to hurt you? That's Trevor Noah describing the situation. Just what you said, Morgan, doesn't have a grasp of the history. Right. They don't have a grasp of the history. And Israel somehow is not allowed to respond because they're the more powerful 
nation. But one of the other things I wanted to key in on here, Murdoch, is something else that's at play in this particular instance, and that is worldwide anti-Semitism. Now, when I say anti-Semitism, I actually mean anti-Jewishness or anti-Israel or Israeli. That's what anti-Semitism actually plays out as today, because technically the Palestinians are Semites also. So technically anti-Semitism doesn't accurately describe what's going on here. But what you have is you have it ingrained around the world for some reason, and I think you can find this reason in the Bible, but you have it ingrained, this hatred of Israel and Jews, God's chosen people as per the Bible. And there's a hatred around the world of those people. It's very strong in Europe. Anti-Semitism is extremely strong in Europe and other places. Of course, it is what played out during the Nazi occupation of Germany and a lot of the rest of Europe where they built those concentration camps and tried to engage in the final solution. The final solution to what problem? The Jewish problem. That's what Hitler described. They had a Jewish problem, and they were going to have the final solution to just kill them all. Man, woman, child. Innocent, guilty, doesn't matter. Kill them all. Why? Because it's a problem, because these people somehow have a problem. They create a problem for the world, and we've got to get rid of them. It's genocide. That's what they wanted to engage in. That anti-Semitism is still alive and well, both in Europe and around the world. It's a phenomenon— that almost defies understanding. When you look at Israel's behavior and the way that the Jews have behaved, the way the Jews have contributed to our world, uh, you know, some of the best scientific contributions, uh, you know, they are the sole democracy right now in the Middle East, the sole functioning uh, government that is more similar to ours than the other autocratic governments that surround them. And with all of these things going for them, the way they behave, you know, how could they be so hated? It's a supernatural, it 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 defies explanation why there's so much anti-Semitism. But that's a big part of what you're seeing here. So it's not just this worldwide communist, Marxist, Leninist ideology of the ends justify the means and worldwide revolution and the destruction of all of our institutions. You've got layered on top of that a built-in anti-Semitism, a hatred of Jewish people that defies explanation and is totally irrational. What do you think about that, Murdoch? I would completely agree, and I think it's something that's been seeping into America, uh, you know, ever since the Obama administration. I think it's very insidious the way it happens. Uh, It's, of course, not portrayed. You don't see uh, politicians like the squad, or you didn't see the Obama administration uh, out and about with uh, either necessarily you know, anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic uh, sentiment, uh, but you see it in the policies, and you see it uh, justified in other means. Well, well, we've been too harsh on Iran. Uh, this is inhumane. Uh, we need to give them truckloads or, excuse me, airplane loads of cash. Uh, you know, we need to uh, look out for the Palestinians because they're being encroached upon. Again, as uh, you talked about earlier, people that are, are not students of history at all, whether students of history in the last hundred years, uh, to realize the, the birth of Israel as a nation, as a, as a recognized nation in 1948, uh, much less, uh, you know, the history of the last 4,000 years. Uh, but, you know, we see it in, 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 in seeping into American politics and American policy in many ways. And I would go ahead, and I don't know how you measure something like this, but I would say the anti-Israeli and anti-Semitic, uh, anti-Jewish sentiment in America, I think, is higher now than it was, say, uh, you know, 12 years ago, easily. No question, Murdoch. No question. Obama led with this. This was, although he didn't state it explicitly, this was part of the plan. That's why it's so amazing to me and so many other people that look at this as commentators as to why the Jewish community in America so heavily supports the Democrats. It it just doesn't make any sense because the Democrats hate Israel. It's so obvious. They hate Israel. There's a built-in anti-Semitism, although it's not directly stated. But like you said, the whole idea of supporting Iran, making a nuclear deal with Iran, giving them hundreds of billions of dollars, not just of digital money, ones and zeros on a computer, but actual cash on pallets flown over and dropped off 
And this for a nation that says that it wants to wipe Israel off the map. They are dedicated to the destruction of the state of Israel, and we befriended them. Thank you for listening to The Morgan Streetman Show. We hope you enjoyed what you heard, and if you did, please click like and subscribe to help us out. And remember that we recommend that you exercise your brain at least once a week.